what does it say to you? I found it interesting that people automatically assume that Swarm was about the beehive. And the reason why I thought that was interesting is because there's a lot of hives out there, you know, mm -hmm. like Nicki Minaj has a hive, the barbs, yeah. you have the Navy with Rihanna. I mean, there's, there's a lot to say about fan culture in general that's not really specific to Beyonce. So what did it say to you that people automatically assume that this was about Beyonce? <laughs> you know, well, and at, at the same time, it's not even about Nija. Like, we barely... See no, it's Nija. not. It's, it really it's, isn't. <laughs> barely see Nija. It's just a backdrop. And I think... Um, I think that's what makes it a psychological thriller is to, is to take things that really happened or really can happen. Not everything is, like they say, is fiction and nonfiction or whatever they say in the beginning of the, of the show. Some of it is fiction based off of real things that have happened or rumors that have happened. So I think that there is interesting dynamic for people to really be able to see themselves, right? Because if, if you make a completely different idea of a character, it's easy for us as people to be like, that's not me. That's not us. We don't do that. But when you make it somebody that's relatable or somebody that you know, then it it, it kind of gives it another level, another layer. I don't even think like Dre is actually a one band, one person band. She's not even a part of a swarm, really. Because even when Haley or Paris Jackson's character comes and was like, we can be like the Black Doma Louise, like she's taking her out. I don't need nobody. You know, it's either me and Marissa or it's nobody at all. So there's not even a, she's not even a part of a hive. She's on her own. She's on her own, her own thing. But I think that, uh, you know, what, what Janine talks about is that they just really wanted somebody who, represents something globally for black women like and who like you know somebody who has done so many things in their career that has been amazing that can make black women proud and and so they is inspired by and art the artist who has done the most things you know so i i think it, it doesn't it's not far for people to be like oh because the connection there's obvious connections that's to play on it but it's deeper than just saying it's about her because it's not about but I, you know, in these in these interviews, like, I don't want to argue semantics because I could be like an a hole. But but is it about her really? Like you know, but no, you know, I, <laughs> right. I let people feel how they want to feel. Yeah, well, and it, and it's never bad when it is creative conversation because there was definitely some in the beehive who were in their feelings about it. <laughs> a, lot, a like, lot of y'all might be projecting, but a lot of people weren't though. <laughs> you know, I think people were in their feelings when they saw the trailer, but I think when you actually watch the show. You, you know, it's not disrespectful to any, any like, artist. It's not disrespectful. It's like, literally, this girl's like, I love her. She's a goddess. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, it's it's not at all. And I think the vehicle, um, Nigel is just a vehicle of the trauma that, to me, that Dre is already experiencing. It has nothing really to do with her fandom or whatever. The fandom is just a vehicle. Yeah, That's exactly. just the outlet in which she's expressing all these things. So no, I picked up what you were putting down. And so I just found it interesting that that conversation was being created mostly by a lot of people who probably really hadn't watched, mm -hmm. um, you know, Swarm. Now I know for actors, there's a certain process going into a character, but because of the type of role this was, what was your process coming out of this character? You know, uh, it's so funny because in all of my films, like I could be doing something really, really heavy and then they say cut and I'm like, Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like making jokes and stuff. And it was the same way for Dre, to be quite honest. I took it very serious, the first kill that she has with Damson's character, because um, I didn't know. I do believe that acting is very spiritual. I often pray to be a, a vessel. I ask that God make me a, be a vessel so that these characters could authentically flow through me. And so it didn't change for Dre. So I wanted to be hyper aware and very v vigilant of the fact that acting is not, acting is like channeling sometimes. Um, and I specifically remember that when I did Judas and when, you know, watching Daniel uh, be Chairman Fred, especially in the church where he's like, I am a revolutionary. Like, I really feel like Daniel was not there. I watched this man and I was like, he left. He And it was like, it was like spirit. Like, I was like chills all over my body. Everybody was like in the audience clapping as if we really were listening to Chairman Fred Hampton. Like, <laughs> it was wild. And I knew that for me, I chills. I knew that for me as well because I because the day before we had to do the assassination scene where I had to cover his body, that whole night I couldn't sleep. I felt sick. I was like, oh man, what's happening? Oh my God, some bad. And I realized, oh, I was thinking something bad was gonna happen tomorrow. And I had to tell myself, oh Dom, nothing bad is gonna happen to Daniel. 
nothing bad is going to happen. Then I realized that my body couldn't differentiate between what I made my mind believe because our mind is our most powerful mm. tool. We manifest. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So why wouldn't it be that if I'm pretending to be this character or if I'm living as this character and like I, like I don't like to pretend, I like to live as them. So if I'm in, if I'm receiving, I'm asking, let me be a vessel for this character. Let the love that Mama Akua has and had for Chairman Fred shine through me, like through my eyes. When people look at my eyes, I want them to see that I love this person. And so then if I ask by, by the end of filming that I that I can love him so much that I could cover his body while pregnant, then we get to the scene where it's happening and I can't sleep and I'm mortified because I made my body couldn't tell the difference. So so then we knew mm-hmm. when we were there that day, uh, Shaka, our director, uh, co-writer, he looked over and was like, we should have a therapist on set. I was like, we like were, all of us. Because it actually ended up falling on the 50th anniversary of the assassination of Chairman Fred. It was like so much spirit in what we were doing that it was like, okay. So when I get, when I went into Swarm, I was like, okay, well, I need a therapist. A therapist has to be on set. And we have to make sure that I get to have time with my therapist once a week. Because I, I felt in the past that, you know, acting the schedule, you have to do a location, it doesn't work out, you know. Um, and then the thing that uh, gets on the chopping block is the things that, work for your personal life, your therapy session, because it can be, it can be moved like that. No, it can't be. Mm-hmm. Or if it can be moved, we have to make sure that it's aligned with my therapist's schedule and that we know that we have, we, if we start off with the intention that once a week, Dominique has to have 45 minutes, 45 minutes, is not even a lot in the grand scheme of setting up shots and doing other stuff, but it's about making sure that it's a priority and the awareness of the AD and everybody involved. The know to know that, and it's not that hard. It's only hard when it when we forget, and then we wanted to be trying to play catch up. And from the top, I say, listen, I'm gonna need this. Like, what are you gonna need to to do this character justice? I'm gonna need to be a producer. <laughs> I'm gonna need to have a therapist on set. I'm gonna need to have my therapist, and um and that was how I kind of prepared be- prepared, and then getting out of it, especially the last episode that killed her girlfriend. That was extremely extremely hard. And I was like, very, very emotional and I couldn't stop crying. And even when I got back to the apartment I was staying in, I, I recorded myself, you know, video drone, but I recorded myself on my phone because I couldn't stay up. It was like, everything was hurting. I was like, can't stay up. I don't even know. Like, like it was, it was like my spirit was finally able to relax. It had fought so hard that day for protection, for whatever, I don't know, but it fought so hard. Cause even when I look at Dre or Tony doing the, the choke and looking away and stuff. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Like, so I was glad. I felt like my ancestors was there holding your girl down. So, um, but yeah. So then after I left, I did not work for six months. I decided I, I did not. You know, I've been working for a really long time. And you get this idea that oh, uh, once you start, you don't want to stop because you don't want Hollywood to forget about you or whatever it is that people could say. But I am blessed because I write my own stuff. So I. I don't have the same uh, desperation that some people might have because you're like, oh, I need somebody else to create something for me. Of course, I love doing what other people, like Donald and Janine created Swarm. That's amazing. I'm so glad I got to do it. But also, if I need a break to take care of myself so that when I go to somebody's set, I'm not tense. I'm not hard. I'm able to focus. I had to clear away so I didn't work for six months. And I went to Costa Rica and I stayed in the middle of a jungle for a week and meditated and video journaled and went to the beach and fell asleep and ate and fell asleep and just did that all day. <laughs> oh my God. I'm, that sounds amazing. <laughs> I mean, that, right. that does. I was like, Oh wow. Geez. Wow. Beach food. I mean, literally those are two of my favorite things ever in life. Like, um, is like one of my and Costa Rica is great. Favorite places. Yep. It, it is. It, it is very great. Um, so, well, that's a, um, that's a, a very exhaustive process that you, that you obviously went through, um, you know, with Swarm. What are you hoping that people, or what are you hoping the impact will be on your career for you playing this type of character? I, I hope that the impact, I mean, the impact has already happened. I have like some of my actor friends, especially black women, it's like, yo, you changed the course of, of acting for black actresses. Like you did something that has not been done um, and now we're inspired. And now I can say, like what Dominique did in Swarm, 
now I want to play a character like Dre because it's been seen now, you know? And so I'm very thankful to Don- Donald and Janine and Amazon or Prime Video for having faith and like doing something that was odd. One of the first things that Donald really said is like, you know, I don't know if it's going to work, but at least we can have the opportunity to just try and figure it out and see if it does. Like, that's what art, like essentially that's what art used to be before everything had to be surefire, before everything had to be something that was already done to be remade because we know it works. What about the the art that we don't know? Like, you know, there's a new, I feel like there's a new inspired revolution that's going to happen again in terms of what we see from writers. Uh, and I think Swarm is a part of that. Um, um, and so that that's a beautiful place to be. And just in, for me, you know, I, I always wanted to be, I said to myself when I was in college, like, man, I want to be like Meryl Streep. She always transforms. She transforms in everything she does. And even if somebody doesn't like a movie, they can say it's boring, they can say this, they can't say she can't act. And I was like, so one thing I want is for them to be like, I don't know if I like that movie, but that girl could act her ass off. Like, you know, like, but that girl could, one thing that I'm going to do is act her ass off. Like, that was something that I always wanted um, to be versatile, um, to to change the course of what we see for, for artists and actors. Um, and so I'm very thankful that I feel like that seed is already Oh, it's already begun. Um, and just for me, like, I don't want to, I I want to continue to do revolutionary roles and things that we don't often see us get to play. And I want people to be like, she can do it. And I don't have to fight for it, to be honest. Because Donald said, if that's the role you want, that's the role you get. And I did that with Swarm. And so I want people to be like, you know, when Dominique says she wants to do something, let's let her do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> 